this is another sculpture forum. And I am uh, gathered via Zoom uh, with uh, the usual crew, Jock Ireland and Brant Janso, and we are honored again to have with us the distinguished critic, historian, and curator, Karen Wilkins. Thank you, Karen. Thank we, you. We, we um, went to see an exhibition of work by Mia Westerland Rusen at the Betty Cunningham Gallery. Um, Betty was kind enough to agree that we could do this forum in the gallery in front of the work, which I personally find always preferable. But we had some technical problems, so we're having to look at uh, uh, video images of the work and, and talk about it via Zoom. Um, this work in this show was um, an enormous uh, pleasure. Uh, I'm not sure that pleasure is the right word, but it was extremely satisfying. Um, I, I thought it was, it was, um, I, I don't know, I don't want to go on about it, but, but um, I found it very moving. Um, anybody else? Definitely. Um, I mean, I'm, I've been a fan of Nia's work for a long time. And, uh, I, you know, there have been shows I like better than others, but this, I think, is a really outstanding group of works. And the one we've just been looking at that was right at the entrance to the show, I find uh, very fascinating. It, it's so ambiguous. It has so many associations or provokes so many associations and is this mysterious, almost indescribable form. Um, I was uh, equally enthusiastic about it, almost everything else in the show. Yes, I, I agree. There wasn't, there wasn't a weak piece in the show, I, I didn't think. I, I felt more drawn to some pieces than others. And I agree about that first piece uh, that we're looking at uh, on, on the left as you enter the gallery. Um, I, I don't know what to how to characterize it. Um, that's, that's part of what's so exciting about it. It's like a what is this? You know, it reminds me of so many things, but it isn't yeah. any of them. Yeah. That was my favorite for just those reasons. Mm -hmm. That that ambiguity quotient was so much higher mm -hmm. than elsewhere. Uh, ambiguity slash elusiveness. Yeah. Yes, and 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 you know, very modest scale, um, mm -hmm. but but utterly beguiling and enthralling. Um, uh, you know, and, and I mean, it's not charming, but it, but it's, but it's, it's, uh, uh, there's something very, I, I, you know, very, um, mysterious about it. Mysterious mm. is the word, I think. Uh, and as you say, modest, but also something uh, very body-like about the uh, size and the proportion and the sense that it swells at one end and you see into it from the other end. Um, yes, and it, hard, it has a hard surface and soft and it's slightly translucent, um, which contributes enormously to its, the sense of its elusiveness. Mm -hmm. This, this piece, this propped up piece, which I don't like as much as the first one you see when you come in, but it also has this um, resonance with classical sculpture. It feels almost like a fragment of a uh, Greek draped yeah. figure. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, I, 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 yes, that's, that's very good. And I, I, felt that that was weakened somehow by the support, which is two I pieces agree. of wood. Yeah, um, the, the right. support doesn't feel as uh, right as the rest yeah. of the piece. Yeah. The support yeah. is casual. Yeah. Well, and, and, that, be, and that piece could be supported from the tail. Yeah. 
They could cantilever, which would be it, great. I, I think it's the um, it's that diagonal piece that is seems so extraneous. Yeah, uh -huh. but it's, it's, it's I mean I mean I don't want to be critical of it because I you know I do like the piece, um, but I felt that the attempt to integrate the two pieces of wood with the the, the form that they are supporting was perhaps a mistake and that perhaps a more frank, you know, mm. form of support that was not, you know, that was in a sense just functional would have been yeah. okay. This, still is, this is the one that's that's my favorite rather than the first one inside the door. Uh -huh. And in, in part because it's, uh, one, one can't tag it to uh, human anatomy. Um, you know, there's an association with um, billowing drapery, you know, that mm -hmm. could be flowing from human figure, but it's, it, it you know, it's not keyed directly in, in that fashion that the first piece is. Well, that's certainly true. And I, I think that's why this piece feels in some way like a fragment. Which is part of yeah. part of its appeal. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of bird-like in its form, isn't it? There's yeah. something I found very kind of bird-like about it. I was surprised by how much I like these columns. There's something about their looking like pleated cloth and standing up that I found contradictory and fascinating. Yes, I think your reference to, to Greek uh, sculpture and architecture. I mean, they could be melted columns um, yeah. from a, a Greek building, but they also are tree trunks of some kind. I, and I, I, and I, somehow very feminine. Uh-huh. Can you say more? Well, this is something that I, I have always sensed in uh, Mia's work. She's, she is pretty consistently been making sculpture that is uh, inflected by feminist ideas. A lot of them feel like being female, like being inside female anatomy. Hmm. Um, and uh, it's, it's partly the way she uses color, it's partly the delicacy. Uh, even when her pieces are made of concrete, they were incredibly thin. She worked with somebody who could do some amazing things. And I suppose it's the association with fabric but in addition to feeling like melted columns, they also feel like vertical figures in, uh, you know, pleated classical chitons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't hit you. She doesn't hit you over the head with it, but it's no. like an, an undertone in her work, and that I think an enriching undertone. Jock, you've been very quiet so far. Uh, no, I, I'm agreeing with everything. Uh, um uh, I, uh, I happen to be s sort of reading um, uh, Sophocles um, and his Antigone and um, all this, the mention of classical Greek sculpture and, and architecture is just, uh, you, you know, just fits perfectly with my take and and what Karen was saying about feminism uh, you know I mean it's kind of awkward thinking of Antigone as feminist but it is uh, uh, and, and there, there there's just a, a, a ri rich uh, content in uh, rich and powerful content in this work. Uh, and we're looking only at, uh, or we've been looking only at, at the work upstairs, uh, the work downstairs, um, and, and just the title of the show, Aftermath, is, um, you know, there are sort of coffin-like uh, things downstairs that, uh, uh, well, that are just very rich, um, and 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 not just sort of rich aesthetically. They're v intensely sorrowful, 
um, you know, just full of feeling. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This this piece we're looking at now um, was another of my favorite pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I, I don't agree with Brand. I thought that the, the this piece and the other one on the left, as my end of the gallery, that their connection to some kind of uh, bodily form was a strength and not a weakness. I mean, I liked that sense that there was a, you know, this could be in some strange world, you know, a human fragment. I mean, God forbid, but, you know, mm -hmm. because it, 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 if it is, it's so deformed and tortured. And yet at the same time, it, you know, there's something about it that is, I don't know what word to use, but um, just finesse. Sumptuous. What we're not getting from this view is the, is the subtle uh, swelling of the piece when you see it end on. There's this yeah. part of, yeah, there you get that kind of little bulge that you yes, don't expect that, on the back. Yes. And there's, there's this color in it, which is also, uh, you know, a little bit visceral and adds to that body well, part, like part makes it a little frightening. Yes, yeah, like something that's been charred, isn't it? Something that's yeah. almost as if it's still hot. Mm. It's wonderful. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Love this piece. But that is so ambiguous, that form. Yeah. Um, it could be. And, and kind of darkly comic. Yeah, almost, that uh, too. Or, that too. Darkly cartoon comic. Like, yes. like Gustin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mia had a big show at Storm King some years ago uh, in which she did excavations in the ground along slots into which she placed things. And I immediately started thinking of that precedent in relation to these sculptures, which are obviously they're freestanding, they're not dug into the ground, they're, they're a different scale completely. But there's still that sense of the uh, almost secret container or private container that was such a big issue in, in the Storm Queen show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else see that besides me? I did see it. I oh. did. See it. Yes, and I and I agree with you that that mm -hmm. that, that, that sense of something being kind of half hidden uh, mm -hmm. and 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 you know yes. Um, secretive about something secretive about it um but that was it it was more uh i don't know vegetative or it, it was about nature or at least as i remember things mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. it wasn't it, it touched on burial mm -hmm. but it it the it wasn't as a sort of directly uh, related to death as as the current show is. Or, I, or I, th I think that's true. I mean, it was outdoors. It was an intervention in a grassy slope. I mean, so. Yeah, but, and involving the seasons and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, things going to sleep in the earth and then mm -hmm. birds but you, bursting you think, out. You think, you think these things are you know, I mean, I, I can understand how there's a kind of suggestion that these things might be coffins, but they might also be cradles or, you know. Yeah. Uh, the scale does that. Well, the scale is magical, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the scale, the size, the physical size of them and the scale of them is there's something just ungraspable about it. Just how big are they? You can't, I found it really difficult to tell. I began to say, to myself, you know, just what the measurements of the thing were, and mm -hmm. I began to find it quite difficult to estimate. Yeah, which is very surprising. I'm usually quite good at that kind of thing. Even so I, I think I think this one uh, in the foreground with the thin plates in it, it may, may be my favorite. There's something about the delicacy of what's in there. Uh, 
and the pinkness. I'm, I find the color fascinating. It's, it's both uh, attractive and repulsive at the same time. Yes, yes, it, 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 it yes. Somewhere and, between fleshy and meaty, isn't it? It's yeah, kind of with, a, with a hint of old ladies' underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about old yeah. ladies. <laughs> Uh, and then, I mean, the way she's playing the matte surface of the exterior of this with the shininess of some of the interiors and the translucency of that uh, yellow one, um, just very subtle and a lot to look at. Yeah, yes. Yes, they, 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 they did withstand, you know, mm -hmm just being engaged over time in a way that is unusual in my experience in going to exhibitions these days. <laughs> Alas, well, this is yeah. about as far away from Charles Ray as you can get on short notice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And yet Ray would insist that his work is modeled, right? Some of yeah. it. It just doesn't happen to be modeled by him. No, supposedly some of them are uh, some of them are some of them are size and then rescanned and then yeah you know, yeah. Into... I and mean then... this 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 work and this show is is you know I mean as you say Karen it is it is a million miles from Charles Ray it has nothing to do with that world of of uh, high tech uh, impersonal. Uh, you know, manipulation that, that he's engaged with. This is very personal, intimate, immediate, you know, direct, uh, honest. And, and um, deliberate, um, deliberately so. I mean, obviously, you know, this is cast resin. She has, has to have help making this, but it's, it feels utterly personal. Whereas even though, uh, as, as Fran says, they, there are uh, rays which we are told he has modeled this by hand before it has been scanned, he's done everything uh, through the process to make it as anonymous and as mechanical as possible. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's a threshold for him. Yeah. It's not alive until it's dead. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, this, this, in the end, this work is about a state of, about a, an emotional state, a state of being, a state that mm -hmm. is somehow or other felt. Um, it's an embodied, it's an embodied, uh, a material, materially embodied kind of condition of being that is what, what we're witnessing here. It's not about ideas. I think embodied is a crucial word, Garth, because even when the interior of this, which is about slicing that slab, uh, there's a sense of animation, there's a sense of something pushing up. Uh, the one we were looking at a little bit earlier with all the holes punched in it, which is also one of my favorites. Uh, the, the, you're so aware of the action of a hand having made those holes. Um, again, again, this this slice in this in the interior of this piece we're looking at, I need to, you to talk. I mean, the ambiguity there about whether mm -hmm. it's something that's you know pushing up, or whether it's a, whether one is witnessing a terrible wound. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, you know it could be either. They work on on so many levels. Yeah, I mean, it's almost frightening. <laughs> it, it's you know, just... you know, I, I agree and disagree, and you know, in in some proportion. But I I think that when I kind of mentally put these pieces up against what John calls my Victorian colleagues, you know, there's a quality of modeling that I miss. 
when you know like if i if i recall that that victor noir monument of dalu you know i wish there were more of that uh basic focus and and habitation of tactile form um you know in some of these pieces and you know others today that that take that depth of plasticity the sort of formal music for granted which you know is, is can't be taken for granted yeah but she the the thing when we were looking at that the piece with the holes punched into it you i i, I sort of thought that's a grid and that's Mondrian, but it's not, you know, it's decisively not Mondrian. It's not taken sort of further. It's not um, perfected in the way that Mondrian, uh, you know, he begins a painting and when it's finished, it's perfect. This, it, Mia refuses that sort of modernist engagement with and and even going back to the 19th century in Dalu uh, it, 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 it she refuses that I'm not sure that I understand what branch uh, reservation is here could, could, I mean I don't think I quite get it I think you need to say more branch I, I think that I mean, they can I mean, be Jock more... Jock seemed, seemed to think you were talking about a kind of perfection. I think that in a level of, of sheer fashion of, of a manual arrival at form, these pieces could be stronger. And I think really, you know, I'm reminded of Victor Noir in part because of the kind of funereal associations with the, the trays on the ground floor. But like better, um, better counterexample would be Giacometti, you know, later 20th century uh, modeler. And if I if I think of the the sort of tooth of those of, of his surrealist phase forms, they're more telling than than you know a given square foot of of these pieces. I, I miss that. For me, that that bird-like billowing piece, um, I liked uh, best because I, I felt that there, the the kind of swelling and uh, you know the windy billowing of the form was like completely articulate. Well, I, I I don't know that I understand anymore what what your concern is. I I think you're looking for something. Uh, the, the, I, I mean, uh, well, it's almost a kind of animism, like in the, the piece that has that, that sort of woven surface. I don't, I don't sense the continuity of, of each, you know, woven band. It seems more like a surface that's, that's kind of punched. And it has a, a kind of like a casual ripple in it, but I don't have a sense of there being something below it or something above it that, that you know, somehow makes its impression on the surface. Uh, um, when you say woven, do you mean the one that has square whole? holes? Okay, well, I don't think she meant, means it to be woven. She means it to be punched. Yeah, but it doesn't feel yep. punched either. Well, it does. Yeah. Don't you experience that as a kind of ambiguity that is engaging? No, I want it to be more ambiguous. I, 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 I found that the, the sense in which it could be, uh, you know, some kind of mesh through which things are sieved, or it could be a blanket. Uh, you know, I, I, I found it's present. It was very present um, yeah. as, as an entity within this whatever you want to call it, this box, yeah. this cradle, this coffin, 
it was very present as an entity, almost as a substitute for a being. I, I found myself um, surprisingly interested in the differences between the holes. And uh, I think that blanket association comes from the ends, which would seem almost fringed. Um, I, I was surprised at how interested I was in what was going on in there. Mm -hmm. uh, in the same way that I was interested in, in all the small ripples and variations in, in the two columns. Mm -hmm. uh, partly because it provoked associations with, as, as has been said, you know, fabric, uh, mesh, uh, almost a kind of uh, screen to contain something. It works on a, on a lot of levels for me. The, the, the bottom line, the bottom line for me is that I, I was, I was moved by these things. I mm -hmm. found myself moved by them. I mean, they, the sense in which there was, a, a, you know, both uh, sorrow, I think that's a word Jock used, and pity, mm -hmm. and, you know, and love in, embodied in these things it was remarkable, I thought. Yeah, and she gets all of that by refusing a lot of uh, stuff that is part of, uh, you know, traditionally part of making art. Uh, um, and and it, it's an Antigone-like uh, refusal of sort of the laws, the rules associated with making art uh, can extend, uh, i can extend I, I, that I, again i don't understand what you're saying John, but you'll come back to that i mean i just want to say that the, the, there's a tremendous amount of i mean i'm not sure whether this comes back to what brand was saying that there's a tremendous amount of labor involved in the production of these things but in no way do they feel laborious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't. Um, and and uh, I mean, they're not. They're not about. They're not about a demonstration of skill at all either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the refusal of skill. It's the saying no. Oh, I don't think so. Well, I mean, it's tremendous, I, tremendous experience. I think to yeah. produce something. As yeah, yeah, rich experience, it. rich human experience, but. Um, you know, the skills sort of fall apart in the face of this rich human experience. But well, then when, it becomes less articulate. When you say refusal of skill, it's as though the assumption is that these uh, containers, whatever they are, should be uh, pristine and uh, crisp and perfect. And she's clearly not interested in that. That's not a refusal. It's an interesting, uh, a long-standing quality in her work of a sense of uh, almost fleshy bodily mass abstracted into other things. That's a choice, it's not a refusal. Well, it's a very decisive choice then. Uh, yeah, it is. It's been constant in her work since almost day one. I, yeah, I think, yeah. I think these things are perfect. Well, when, it, it, when I say perfect, you, I, I mean in a, in a uh, geometric way, that's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understood. I, yeah. understood. I, I know I you did. <laughs> but I just want to come back to, to, yeah. you know, to insist that I think they are exactly what, what they need to be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I and I'm I'm not disagreeing with that. Uh, and they are perfect, but it's fascinating to me that they're perfect in a very different way from Mondrian or uh, Giacometti. It, it's uh, and, but, and they're but, perfect. But I think I mean maybe you're onto something, Jock, in the sense that I think that they refute the idea of perfection. You know, they, because they're so human. Okay. 
yeah, that's, you know, I'm, I, I'm not disagreeing with anything you just said. Uh, Good. <laughs> And it's, it, you know, I don't have that much contact with students, but it, it's remarkable to me with it, to see in the students that I am in contact with um, a, a sort of similar uh, sensibility. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just, I hope lots of young people come and see this show. Because yeah. yeah, they're I sort of know. thinking I... this way already. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I, I, I'm told, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but I am told that there is a, a you know, a, amongst the younger generation, a, a kind of hunger for getting their hands dirty and getting involved in physically manipulating material. Um, uh, I hope it's true. I hope so too. I mean, I you know, I don't I don't want to go on about this stuff. I mean, I think that the, the images we have on the video are excellent. Um, they do a far better job than the, the photographs the, the the gallery had very generously produced. Uh, the, the photographs in the catalog to the show are not anywhere near as good. These images um, and the, the color is way off in the catalog too. Yes, uh, but even these images, you know, they leave something out. There, there's a kind of radiance to some of the work mm -hmm. that is impossible to capture. I think uh, on a screen. I mean, I spent some time looking at how they were lit because it seemed as if they might be, you know, was lit from within, uh, spot lit, but they they weren't. They were just ordinary gallery floodlight. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. I know particularly striking with that uh, very yellowish one in the foreground here, which seems very translucent when you look at it. Um, and and yes, it's different it's, than the others. It, yeah, it seems to the one where the resin w was left unpainted. Uh, yeah. At least on the box, I think what's inside yeah. it has some color in the resin. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think there's a mixture of both coloring the resin and then painting it and removing some of the paint uh, involved here. But yes, uh, so it, when you see this, you, you know, like this view we're looking at now, there's something lying in there and you want to know what it is. This one feels much more interesting seeing through it than looking into for some reason. Uh, maybe because of that translucency. translucency. Mm -hmm. you know, the, others, the others don't reveal themselves until you go look inside. Yeah. Yes, well, it's a wonderful show. Um, I don't, not sure we've convinced you, Brian. Uh, do you want to say anything further? Well, you know, I, I agree with you on each point in some proportion. <laughs> but this, this work is of this moment. Uh, and it's not something that any young person can imitate uh, with any success, I don't think. But it's something that uh, young people ought to uh, engage with. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, I think this. I think you're right. I think this is very mature work um, by an artist who's had, you know, a career and a lot of experience. And in yeah. many ways, I think this is some of her best work. I I agree with that. Yeah, me too. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.